hello everybody i am back with another video this one is going to be a little bit more personal um, about my uh, symptoms of health issues that i've had over the past few years and how it could be related to my copper iud i just want to throw out a disclaimer that i am by no means a doctor and your doctor should always be your first resource but i am a true advocate or taking your health in your own hands and doing your own research before going to see a doctor. So maybe this is a great starting point. By no means take everything that I'm saying to heart because I could be very wrong in some ways. But in some ways I do feel like I'm on the right path for my own health and I know what is best for myself. And just like you know what is best for yourself. So. Just throwing that disclaimer out there, I don't want anybody to be mad and harping on me because I'm not a doctor and I'm giving this information, but I do find that people that share their story um, help empower other people to be an advocate for their own health. So hopefully that's what you get out of this and you learn something from what I'm about to say today. So last Friday I got my copper IUD out. Um, I'll kind of tell the whole story of how I decided to make this decision. I, if you guys follow Carissa Pukas, she got her breast implants out and she had a number of symptoms um, that were very similar to mine and I was kind of intrigued by the whole thing. I don't have breast implants, I'm just throwing that out there. These could not be fake <laughs> if I tried. Um, but I did read a comment on one of her Instagram posts about a girl that took her copper IUD out who had similar symptoms and that got me thinking, what if it's my copper IUD? So about two years ago, I went off the pill um, because it no longer was helping my skin. I was starting to notice the symptoms that all birth control pills um, give and my doctor recommended that I go off of it and of course I didn't want to fall pregnant. So I decided to go for a non-hormonal source of birth control and I picked the copper IUD. When I picked the copper IUD, I asked my doctor what the side effects were and all he said was that I would have a heavier blood flow on my period and that I would also possibly become anemic and would have to take an iron supplement, which is totally fine because I already do that. Um, so I did the copper ID. I put it in um, and for the first, I know, year, it was kind of hell, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, putting it in was fine. I didn't have any pain or any of that surrounding that, but my hormones did not know how to regulate themselves after years of being on the pill. And I kind of chalked it up just to that. I didn't think of anything else that could be um, impacting me. And I certainly did not think about the thing that I just stuck in my body during this fragile time in my body, body's life. So, so I put my copper IUD in and then I saw this comment of a few months ago and it kind of is burning in me. Um, I've been experiencing issues that relate to thyroidism and or hypothyroidism rather. And if you guys don't know, the thyroid is a butterfly gland in your neck that helps um, regulate your metabolism by dispersing T3 and T4 hormones into your bloodstream. And when you are experiencing um, symptoms of hypothyroidism or dysfunction of the thyroid, I have a book full of symptoms right here I'm just gonna read you will experience these following things okay so the symptoms are fatigue and drowsiness hair loss cold intolerance ability to lose weight sadness and depression mental fog and forgetfulness joint pain acne puffy face acid reflux stomach pain morning fatigue irritability palpations night sweats emotional liability Weight loss, nervousness, anxiety, feeling hot, trouble sleeping, apathy, feeling numb, vertigo, and nausea. So of these symptoms, I was definitely feeling fatigued, especially lately. Hair loss has been a thing that's 
caused me to get extensions in the past because I literally have this much hair and I used to have a I always had fine hair but lots of it uh, cold intolerance something that I definitely have been noticing I get to the point where I'm freezing all of a sudden and it takes literally a hot bath or putting three layers of clothes on me or a blanket to get me back to a normal temperature not normal mental fog and forgetfulness I the last two years have noticed this especially I feel like I am developing Alzheimer's and I say that often as a joke but let me tell you it's not a joke <laughs> acne definitely something I've always experienced in my life but the last two years it has progressed down my neck I don't know if you can see because I have it pretty well covered but it has progressed down my neck and I've never had acne on my neck before I've always had it in my chin and my forehead but it wasn't cystic acne until I got this IUD put in and that's very interesting to me also having problems with weight loss I <clears throat> have experienced a 10 pound gain in the last month and yes I had been dieting for my wedding <clears throat> but I also wasn't going crazy like I was eating treats but I wasn't and I didn't diet down to a bikini lean um, physique by no means I just felt I just dieted down to a weight that I felt comfortable in my wedding dress and it wasn't enough I personally think to throw my thyroid off kilter Trouble sleeping, another thing that I always deal with. I now, thankfully, can get to sleep, but I have a problem staying asleep. Also, stomach pain, that was another thing that I have definitely experienced. I used to get abdominal pains right where, actually, the insertion of, like, right in my uterus area, and I would go to the doctor or go to emergency, and they would send me away with no answers. and. I literally didn't know why I was getting these crazy pains. So how does this relate to my IUD and why does my thyroid feel like it's being affected because of the IUD? Copper is an essential mineral for your body. It helps you maintain good bone health, connective tissue, cardiovascular health, lipid metabolism, and neurological health as well as good skin but when there is a toxic amount of copper in your system like I said it can affect your thyroid and can throw off the important balance of your copper and zinc levels in your body ideally you want your copper and zinc balance to be one copper to every eight zinc molecules and when I put this copper IUD in I wasn't recommended to go on a zinc supplement. I had already been on one because it is good for your immune system and your skin. But I have noticed that whenever I do not take my zinc, the symptoms that I have felt around my thyroid, they come back tenfold and it's crazy. Like I have never experienced that much of a change in my skin, health, my energy levels and all of that when I was taken off a zinc supplement. So something really to consider. So how do you gain copper toxicity? So we'll kind of go through the many different ways. They're not just copper IUD, there's other things as well. And I have them outlined right here in my handy book. Sorry if I keep relaying back to the book, but there's a lot of information and I want to give it all to you guys. So copper toxicity can be caused by things such as drinking tap water um, and water pipes if there's copper uh, pipes. Obviously the copper is going to be leached into the water and causing copper toxicity. Birth control pills. They don't contain copper but they can raise copper levels in your body and copper has a special relationship with estrogen and our, us ladies especially because we have lots of estrogen in our body to keep us female this can be problematic. Copper IUDs. Another thing like I said it's a copper IUD. Literally, it is leaching out into your uterus, the copper, to help kill sperm um, when it is present. So it's leaching out into your body. And copper has a good way, because it's good for your immune function, to go towards areas that are being attacked uh, within your body and are under um, inflammation and all that. And to the point where so much copper is being leached out, 
to go to these areas that it could be very well attacking your thyroid. Um, <clears throat> and also, if you have weak adrenals, healthy adrenals will produce copper binding proteins, which cl declines when adrenals are fatigued. So this is one thing that I do know. know. My adrenals were 100% fatigued when I went to my naturopath. I, about a year after I was really getting sick and tired of all of these symptoms and though that those symptoms have been alleviated a bit they have come back and i want to get back to that place i had super weak adrenals high cortisol levels and i had to change my life to help help that but i also feel like since i'm a really active person and constantly on the go that my adrenals have taken a hit and by consequence, copper toxicity has also fatigued them. Also, like I said previously, a zinc deficiency because zinc is necessary to balance copper in your body. So what am I doing to help alleviate it? Well, obviously I took away the source. So I got rid of my copper IUD last Friday. I already feel a lot more energetic. I don't know if that's placebo effect, but I honestly can feel myself getting better. I have taken it upon myself to do my research. Like I said, I'm an advocate for my own health. So I got this book. Um, it's called The Hashimoto's Protocol, A 90 Day Plan for Reversing Thyroid Symptoms and Getting Your Life Back. It's by Isabella Wentz. She has a lot of great knowledge. She has committed her whole life to work to um, diagnosing thyroid issues because her herself has gone through it and has Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease where your body literally attacks the, your hormones in your thyroid or attacks your th thyroid so it can't make thyroid hormones such as T3 and T4. But I don't think I have that. I just think that because of this to copper toxicity that is built up in my body um, that I could be very well affected by thyroid like symptoms that I outlined at the start of this video. So she has three protocols that we will go through um, to help restore your health. The first protocol that I'm going through currently is a liver detox. Um, the second is adrenals. And then lastly, she goes over how to get your gut health back. She has done lots of research on natural healing and though she believes in medications in some cases, a lot of instances she's found that just changing your lifestyle and the things you eat um, has also impacted the health of your thyroid. So, so first I'll go over the liver protocol because that is what I'm doing and I'll probably be the only one that I'm going to go over today. Um, it is something that you can do with me for the next two weeks and then once I progress from that I'm going to move on to the adrenal protocol um, and then finally the gut health protocol for a total of the 90 days. But first I'm going to talk about the liver protocol and why Dr. Wentz thinks it's important to detox your liver in repairing your thyroid especially after it's been attacked. I'm just taking it as a base level um, and anything that could help my thyroid would be beneficial. So the liver protocol goes over decreasing your exposure to molds, everyday toxins, heavy metals, halogens, chlorine, bromide, fluoride, decreasing the amount of personal care products and maybe making them more a green option, decreasing the amount of household things that contain chem chemicals because anything that contains chemicals especially during this really fragile time for your thyroid can impact um, your recovery. It also notes that doing your research about food a lot of people have intolerances that they just don't abide by and it's super important especially with thyroid health since it can be greatly impacted by gluten and dairy and if you have an intolerance to those, maybe it is time to take them more seriously. Just with other things, getting rid of the processed crap that you eat. Because ultimately that's going to slow down your liver ability to detox your body. A typical day of eating for me um, is I wake up, I have a hot lemon water, maybe with some ginger. Then I make a green smoothie. I usually put a bunch of spinach, some lettuce, a banana protein powder, maca powder, which is awesome for hormone balancing, flaxseed, high in omega-3s, half an avocado, 
and coconut milk. And then I also put a little bit of chia seeds in there as well. And this has been awesome. It keeps you so full and it's so full of good micronutrients and lots of fiber that will keep you full and ultimately fill your body up with life but and energy because of all the energy that is in those plants. Sometimes you just look at some foods and you know that you're gonna feel great after you eat them, whereas others, like a burger, you're not gonna feel as good. So fueling your body up with good foods all the time is definitely gonna help detox the liver. So that's what I've been doing every morning. And then I comes to lunch, I have a salad with lots of different vegetables. Um, I've been incorporating like beet spirals. Beets are really good for your thyroid health and also like sweet potato spirals and all that, making it your bowl of salad nice and colorful and array. I've been staying away from nightshade vegetables like peppers um, and tomatoes just because they have been known to cause inflammation. And I do know for myself that after I eat salsa, I don't feel great. So I t have taken those out and substituted for like cucumbers, all your alkaline foods, cucumbers, celery, and all of that, and spinach. So I have that with some protein, and then I move on to having a green juice um, later in the day. Usually looks like spinach, water, ginger, lemon, and maybe an apple, and I put that all together and it tastes so refreshing, and then I'll have that with a side of either carrots with hummus um, to snack on and get through the rest of the day to prepare me for dinner, which looks similar to lunch. I usually have lots of vegetables. I try to get my cruciferous vegetables in like broccoli and cauliflower, which are awesome for getting rid of cortisol in your stomach and help balancing your hormones. And then I also have a healthy source of protein and also a healthy source of fat. I will probably put olive oil, avocado oil, avocado as well, and or coconut oil and use that to cook vegetables or my meat. And then at night, I've been either having a green juice or I have a snack that usually incorporates some type of vegetable. So very vegetable rich diet right now. I'm going to keep you guys posted on everything that I am doing. And like I said, I will come back and update this video with the next protocol, which is uh, focusing on adrenal health. Um, and if you want to pick up this book, I'm not sponsoring this book in any means, but it has been awesome and she lays it out really, really easy for everybody to understand. And it's a good resource, especially if you're thinking that your thyroid is the cause of all your misfortune. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I hope you found something useful from it. I am totally into the whole hormone balancing thing and I can definitely bring that into more videos. I am planning to bring back Food That Heals on the YouTube now um, every week with possibly a recipe instead of just talking about foods that you can incorporate and I think that will be better because people can then actually incorporate the foods that will help a certain symptom that they are experiencing. So if you guys want to see that, stick around. Hopefully I'll have one up this Friday um, and thank you for sticking around this long. Um, I love you guys so much, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. If you could, please support this video, give it a like, comment down below if you have the same feeling, like let's create a community of, this pe of people that are dealing with the same thing so we can lean on each other and get through this together. All right guys, goodbye. Love you.